Hi there, everybody. Welcome to Honors Biology Ecology Lecture video number six. This is the last video of this particular unit. Our last video covers humans and the environment. So we're talking about the, how humans have impacted the environment. If you're interested in this types of concepts, you should take AP Environmental Science, your junior or your senior year. I teach that class also. So if you want to ex um, extrapolate information, you want to go way deeper into the subject, take that class in a couple years. All right, so let's begin. The first impact we're going to talk about is climate change or global warming is what they call it. Why do they call it global warming? Because the earth is getting warmer. Sometimes they refer to it as climate change and climate is getting warmer. So global warming encompasses that factor. Now, you may have heard this term before. It's called the greenhouse effect. And what is the greenhouse? I'm going to explain to you the greenhouse effect using a common example, using your, your car, something I know everybody in, our, everybody in our class has experienced a greenhouse effect and probably didn't realize they were experiencing the greenhouse effect. So let's talk about it. Let's say you park your car on a sunny, warm day outside in the sun. What, and your windows are closed. So you park your car in a parking lot, you leave it out in the sun all day long, or even for an hour, it doesn't even matter, and you come back to your car a little while later. It's been sitting in the sun. You open your door and you get inside your car and it is 120 degrees inside of your car. It is crazy hot inside of your car. You now have just experienced the greenhouse effect. So what is the greenhouse effect? Well, the windows of your car are like the glass in a greenhouse. A greenhouse is made out of plexiglass. Light can pass through glass. So light, just like in this picture, light can go right through the glass, the windows of your car. Then the light touches the inside of your car and it gets converted into heat energy. Okay, so energy can be converted from one form to another. It gets converted from light to heat when it gets absorbed by the upholstery and the leather seats and the dashboard and the steering wheel and all the parts on the inside of your car. It gets converted into heat. Now the heat is stuck on the inside of your car because your windows are closed. So the heat can't just leave your car. It has to stay in the car because your windows are closed. So all of a sudden you come up, open the door, and you get blasted by a lot of heat. Your car experienced the greenhouse effect. How does the earth experience the greenhouse effect? Well, your, the earth, the, and by the way, in case I don't ex, so make sure I explain it, the, a greenhouse is a giant plexiglass area where there's plants on the inside of it. Light penetrates the plexiglass of the greenhouse effect, touches the plants and everything on the inside of the greenhouse, and it get, the light gets converted into heat. If you actually have been inside of a real greenhouse, it is very warm inside of a greenhouse. So that's once again why we call it the greenhouse effect. The earth, we don't have glass around us like a greenhouse does, but we have transparent air and a lot of carbon dioxide in that air. Light can pass right through. Sunlight goes right through carbon dioxide, hits the earth, gets converted into heat. And then when that, that heat energy wants to escape, but this carbon dioxide that surrounds the earth, it's like glass causing the long wavelength heat energy to go back to the earth. Okay. So the earth basically gets warmer because the carbon dioxide in the air is not allowing the heat to escape the planet and go to outer space. So we do not have glass that surrounds the earth, but we have transparent gases that surround the earth. And those transparent gases act like a greenhouse around our planet, making the earth warmer. Which gases do that? Methane, carbon dioxide, water vapor in the air does it also. Cloudy days are generally warmer than, than clear days. Most people don't, know, don't realize that because they think, oh, clouds, the sun isn't out and it's going to be a cooler day. Yeah, it'll be cooler, but, but during the wintertime, cloudy days are actually warmer than clear days. So the water vapor in the air will actually trap heat. The biggest contributor, the biggest problem is carbon dioxide. Where does all this carbon dioxide come from? This crazy extra amount of carbon dioxide from humans. We burn fossil fuels. We burn too much of it or we combust fossil fuels. We also burn down forest and clear land for farming. And when you remove trees, you now have less photosynthesis. So you have more carbon dioxide in the air. All right. So this is the, it's called climate change. It's called global warming. And it's called the greenhouse effect. The biggest problem, 
too much carbon dioxide. And we humans are the cause for all that carbon dioxide. The second concept is called um, the ozone layer and ozone thinning, meaning the ozone layer has areas that have thinned out and they've healed themselves and they've come back to life, but they thin out periodically throughout the year. So we'll talk about that. What is ozone? Well, oxygen you breathe is O2. Ozone is O3. Ozone we've heard about in a previous unit. Ozone protects us from ultraviolet radiation. You do not need to know this for the test, but there's ultraviolet A, ultraviolet B, ultraviolet C. C is the worst one, and it gets blocked by our ozone layer and by our atmosphere. So UVC doesn't penetrate. It would be the worst one. It would be the most dangerous one, has the most energy. UVB, most of UVB gets blocked by the ozone layer, okay? And so a little bit of it makes it through. This UVB is the one that causes skin cancer. So if all of it got through, we would have major problems, but most of it is blocked by the ozone layer. UVA is not blocked by the ozone layer, but UVA is not the kind of ultraviolet light that has enough energy to cause the cancer. So UVA is not the dangerous ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet radiation that's dangerous is the B and the C. The B is the one where a little bit of it makes it through the ozone layer. So our sunscreen of our planet is ozone, O3. It's about 20 kilometers above the earth. How far is that? On a 13, 12, 13 miles above the earth is where it's at. What does UV radiation do? It causes mutations and, and it damages DNA. It can lead to cancer. So what is the human impact? Humans use chemicals here on earth that rise up and they react with ozone and they turn it into O2. So they get rid of ozone and they turn it into oxygen. Oxygen does not protect us from ultraviolet radiation. So the issue becomes, uh-oh, if we remove the ozone layer or thin it out, we have now a higher likelihood of developing cancer as a result of more radiation um, exposure. What chemicals do we use on Earth that destroy ozone? They're called CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. Man-made chemicals. What do they do? They create reactions and those reactions break off an oxygen from O3 and turn it into O2. All right. Where do we get chlorofluorocarbons? Well, we use them in refrigerants. They used to use them in air conditioning units and refrigerants to keep things cold. They used to be in spray paint cans, aerosol cans, in, in foam or styrofoam or packaging material. They used to use CFCs to produce them. But they, when they first made them, they had no idea that they would react and destroy ozone, actually. Here on Earth, they don't react. As they rise up, conditions get optimal and then boom the reaction happens when they're in the stratosphere okay so chlorofluorocarbons at the ground level they're not usually they're not causing many they're not doing a whole lot of anything they're not reacting with too many things but they do react with ozone and ozone is way up there so when they float up they create problems um, acid rain or acid precipitation is the next human impact so here's a ph scale seven is neutral all right neutral ocean water is about eight Look at all these pHs down here. This is the acid part of the scale. Anything below seven is an acid, all right? Um, acid rain is generally, just so you know, acid rain is usually less than five. It's down here. Normal rain is around 5.5 .5 to six. So normal rain is up here. People think normal rain is pH seven. It is not. Normal rain is actually pH of five and a half to six. Why is normal rain a little acidic? Because carbon dioxide in the air makes carbonic acid. So it makes it a little bit acidic naturally. It's like carbonation in your soda. The rainwater is carbonated a little bit, so to speak. So that's the little bit of lowering the pH. When other things rise, they can lower the pH below this five and a half, and that's when it becomes acid rain. So acid rain, 5.5, 6.0, even though it's acidic, we generally don't consider that acid rain. It has to be below that number before it's considered acid rain. What causes acid rain? Well, humans burn things that rise up in the sky. We burn things and we release nitrogen oxides, NO2, and we release sulfur oxides. Nitrogen oxides come from burning just about anything. Your car driving today is releasing nitrogen oxides. Okay, it's a it happens. It it's a reaction that happens as a result of the burning of the fuel. Sulfur oxides are released when coal is burned in a power plant. You and I aren't burning coal at our houses, so we are not releasing a lot of sulfur, but there are 
coal burning power plants in the United States, and those are releasing a lot of sulfur. So the sulfur, the nitrogen oxides rise, they react with water, and then they convert into nitric acid or sulfuric acid. These are very strong acids. Carbonated water is carbonic acid. That's a weak acid, okay? Nitric acid, sulfuric acid, strong, nasty acids. So to get acid rain, you need one of these strong acids to form. Carbonation does not form a strong acid, but sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides form nitric acid and sulfuric acid, and those are the strong acids that lead to the issues that you get from acid rain. Well, what happens with acid rain? Well, soil gets destroyed, plants get destroyed, lakes become too acidic, fish die, habitats are changed, buildings and statues erode and get destroyed. Um, the big one is soil loses a lot of its nutrients due to acid rain. Acid rain dissolves the nutrients in the soil and moves them or leaches them away. So that's one of the big problems from acid rain. How do you solve this problem? Um, don't burn coal. Don't drive a car. Burn less stuff. Um, create power, energy, not by burning things. Those are the ideal ways to reduce acid rain. You have to eliminate nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxide emissions. And we call them emissions because they're released in smoke. All right? That'll end our lecture.